Hi there, Nabil. So, uh, let's see. We go straight into this new package of essays. Let's see what you wrote. This one's a challenging topic about democracy. Let's see what you wrote about it, shall we? Globalization is a perfect example of a double-edged sword. On one hand, some hold that it is detrimental to society since citizens are not able to influence the fiscal policy of their governments. Others deem that financial markets are pivotal to ensure due diligence on taxpayers' cash flows. This essay subscribes to the latter claim, okay, uh, since the international capital markets is a fundamental, mm, this is strange, in capital markets are a fundamental ecosystem to judge how governments operate. Okay, so here's the thing. I had to read this two or three times. Um, I thought the language you used was wonderful. I thought it was very nice. It flowed. It was high level. It was all very impressive as I read it. But then as I read it again and again, I became more and more concerned that maybe this is not entirely off on topic. You started talking about globalization. And I really think that your focus here should have been on democracy because reading this, it's not clear that you're going to talk to us about the threat democracy is facing. Okay. Um, what it sounds like you're going to talk about is that uh, you're going to say that financial markets are really important um, to, well, you talked about taxpayers cash flow so I'm not really entirely sure what you mean so yeah I, it doesn't feel like you're going to talk about this issue of uh, democracy though okay um, so, so let's go on I just I do have a concern about this but I want to see what you actually actually wrote in the paragraphs that follow it has often been asserted that owing to the ratings investors attribute to each state which affect Borrowing costs considerably, word order, ministries are deterred, you don't mean double T here, allocating their funds toward junk investments. To illustrate this idea, a highly cited paper published by The Guardian claimed, you didn't need a comma there, claimed that Germany has successfully curbed their interest rates as a result of sustainable projects for real estate development and education, which have sustain, substantially jump-started the well-being and health of German citizens. Therefore, it is evident that globalization is a great way to promote efficient governments, which then might be elected for another mandate. What happened here and therefore? I don't understand that. Okay, let's move on and then we'll talk um, a little more. Furthermore, a think tank holds the notion that the current financial ecosystem of the developed world is designed to preserve democracy and avoid totalitarian regimes. Research conducted by SDA Bocconi's Faculty of Economics and Political Sciences found that you don't need a comma here. Oh, yeah, you did have a comma. Found that Europe is a successful democratic system where each state represents one vote for any important decisions, such as the budget allocated for the pension systems. This shows how the current democracy in some countries has evolved in order to spread the power in different hands and consequently avoid totalitarian regimes. In the final analysis, global financial markets could be profoundly advantageous for democratic, not democracy, democratic regimes. Not only does it provide financial rewards in terms of debt costs for state, but also to ensure, also it ensures the correct management of public finances. Okay, so um, I wanted to go through the whole thing because I thought your writing in general was wonderful. I thought it was really well written. I thought it was uh, fluent. I thought it flowed well. You had great vocabulary, uh, some excellent grammar uh, like this here, not only does it, etc., etc. You had a handful of those throughout the uh, essay, and that was great. I have to be honest with you. Now, I'm not... Um, you know, obviously in finance, um, or even well versed in it, but I really didn't understand what you were trying to say in this paragraph. This is where you lost me. Okay. Um, so I do want to read it again. Um, this one was clear. Your conclusion was clear, but I do want to give this one more read through. Okay. So what I understand here, I read it again a couple more times, is that you're saying that the fact that the global capital markets um, exist, they influence the government, but you're saying that they influence the government 
in a good way. So they kind of act as like a checks and balances system. This is what I sort of understood. Okay, I hope that that's correct. Um, and then it sounds to me like you said the same thing again, um, but in a different way. So in other words, here you were talking about it from a political standpoint. Here you were talking about it from an economical standpoint. Um, and you said that you believe that financial markets are pivotal to ensure due diligence on taxpayer cash flows. Okay, I'm still just trying to think this, I'm thinking that aloud and um, trying to understand what you were saying. Okay, so basically I, I'm going to, I don't want to say give you the benefit of the doubt, but I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, this was good. I do have some reservations about the fact that you didn't mention, I mean, essentially this was a one-sided essay, essentially, where you you told us that, you know what, no, you disagree with this. You basically think that the global capital markets have um, have kind of acted in the best interests of taxpayers and of citizens. And so, you know, no, they haven't lost control of their government. That sounds like what you were saying to me in this essay. I hope this is what you were trying to get across because this is what I understand. So it was a pretty one-sided essay. Part of my concern is that you didn't really mention um, you know, if in fact people have lost control, but I guess you, I don't know. Like I said, I really kind of struggled with this. You can see I've been talking to myself now for about seven minutes, um, trying to decide if, um, just how on topic it was. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, it was very good. Um, you used, you clearly had some information about this. You clearly had some background knowledge and that shows. So, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, other than the fact that I, I kind of struggled a little bit, but, um, it was well written for sure. Okay. So want to move on to your task one here about recycling. Okay. Worldwide Madrid, Barcelona. Fine. Okay. The bar charts illustrate the recycling rates of three different materials, glass, paper, plastic, on a global scale, and for two Spanish cities. Good. Overall, paper accounted for the biggest proportion in terms of worldwide. Worldwide should be one word. Uh, worldwide recycling rates. Okay. While glass for the smallest one. What? Paper accounted for the biggest proportion. Uh, while glass. That's a little awkward. Uh paper accounted for the biggest proportion in terms of worldwide recycling rates uh, while glass uh, I don't know maybe was the least I'm, I'm not sure uh, in sharp contrast paper was less was the least hold on a second so paper was paper 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 okay paper was the least common recycled item in Madrid while um, you can't do this here while it was plastics for barcelona all right you don't really need to get into all of this for your overview because you know you only have nine pieces of information to talk about here so i kind of feel like you you went too much into detail here okay um so i think a different overview would have been maybe a little more effective. So let me make a suggestion here. I probably would have said something like this. Uh, overall, paper accounted for the biggest proportion in terms of worldwide recycling rates, while for the two Spanish cities, it was among the lowest. And that's it. Okay? Um, something like that, because you can see it here it's 54, but here it is the lowest, and here it's almost the lowest. So I probably would have done something like that. Let's move on. Paper and plastic constitute, with an E, the biggest ratio of recycled materials around the world. The former recycling ratio is at 54%, which is more than double uh, that, which is more than double that of Madrid and Barcelona, whereas the latter was just over one third of the total recycled materials. Okay, this has become a really complicated sentence. Um, and I would avoid this again 
partially because it's just overcomplicated. You're talking about Bar Madrid, you're talking about Barcelona, you're talking about worldwide. It's a little confusing. But the other reason is because you only have nine things to talk about. So spread it out. Um, go into, you know, some more detail. Um, don't try to group everything together like this. Okay? Okay, let's move on. When it comes to glass, the worldwide percentages are markedly lower than those in Madrid and Barcelona glass. Okay. As it shows, glass is recycled five times higher than those on a global scale, 55% during 11 uh, versus 11 respectively. Likewise, in Madrid, the percentage is at 38% in this regard. Okay. Um, this was unclear when you said it was five times higher. Five times higher where? So you needed to rewrite that a little bit. I like the first sentence, markedly lower. That's good. Let's try it one more time. When it comes to glass, the worldwide percentages are markedly lower than those in Madrid and Barcelona. Fine. Um, I would have get rid of this as it shows. So um, in Barcelona, glass is recycled five times more than in, uh, than worldwide. Okay at 55 percent you don't need to say the 11 do you yeah i guess you do uh 55 at 55 percent um and then let's see uh likewise in madrid the percentage is at 38 percent yeah i guess that's okay i would have just changed that first sentence then um, but yeah, this paragraph for me had some issues, especially this thing that starts with the former and then it goes all the way to 34%. That was a little problematic and needed some rewriting. Um, on the whole, I thought it was pretty good. Again, just keep in mind that you want to kind of um, stretch things out a little bit. Now, how did you divide this? You decided to talk about um, paper and plastic in one paragraph and then uh, glass in the other. I personally would have probably done it differently. I probably would have talked about the worldwide figure in one paragraph and then I would have um, spent my next paragraph talking about the two Spanish cities and just contrasting that to the world, uh, the worldwide figures. That's just another way to do it. That's, that's how I would have done it. All right, so um, go ahead and correct these um, and let's see more work. Uh, okay, so good luck to you.